Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. We're gonna continue our SDR series on software-defined radios, and we're gonna continue where we left off last week. I did a practical example where I went into the Tonto National Forest and was trying to send a number of transmissions from various locations over the course of an hour back to my home station. And since I didn't have anybody else to play radio with, I had left my station at home running the RTL SDR blog V3 dongle with some software and it was configured to only record when I transmitted. So in the course of me being out there for an hour, I only transmitted for one minute. So the effect was when I got back to the house, I had a single audio file that was one minute in length. So think about the applications of being, to, being able to monitor any frequency and only recording audio when there's traffic. So preppers, think about that. Ham radio guys, you get it. So. We're gonna get into that in a second. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna talk about the station gear. And I'm gonna to try to make this series not be super propeller head nonsense. That's not compute because I feel like I'm gonna lose a lot of people. So the most important aspect of what I'm gonna be talking about are what's possible. And I'll try to give you guys pointers to explore on your own. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the hardware first, then the software. All right, let's talk about the hardware you're gonna to need to do this, and it's very minimal. In fact, you pretty much own almost all of it already. So the first piece you're gonna need is an SDR. I'm using the RTL SDR Blog V3. This is going for about 30 bucks today on Amazon, and I'll put my affiliate link below if you guys wanna help support the channel. Thanks if you do. Um, what's cool about this is that it has a USB-A port, so all you need to do is plug it into your computer and then install some software and you're pretty much good to go. Uh, you also will need an antenna. There is an SDR um, kit that includes uh, an antenna. I actually don't like it since I'm an amateur radio operator. I prefer to use my own antennas. So for me, since I standardize on a BNC connector, I typically like to use a SMA to BNC adapter. And then I primarily have a couple of antennas. Um, I'm just gonna use either this telescoping uh, antenna, or in my case, I'm gonna use my actual wire antenna that I use for amateur radio. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in the terminal armament holder. And then the other piece of gear that I have uh, that's also optional is a three foot USB extension cable. And the reason for it is I don't like the SDR sticking out of the side of my computer. So instead I have one end of the three foot cable going into my computer, and then I just plug the other end into the SDR. And I find it to be a lot more pleasant. And then for me, I've also found, especially coupled with the right um, option for mounting, I can actually use my radio pouch that has my other gear as a good place to kind of keep it out of my way. So for this test, I'm actually gonna use my wire antenna and we're just gonna connect this to the top. So just to recap, all you need is a computer, the RTL SDR V3 or your preferred SDR and an antenna and that's all you need. So quite literally for probably less than 40 bucks, you can do this and what's great about uh, the SDR receivers is that it is a receiver. You do not need to be licensed and it opens you up all the way from listening to uh, AM broadcast stations with the right antenna, all the way to the HF frequencies for amateur radio, shortwave AM listening so you can listen to broadcasts across the world. Uh, I was listening to uh, India, for example, this morning, and China, and Japan, and Australia. So really cool stuff. Um, and then all the way into uh, the VHF, UHF amateur radio bands. Um, I was listening to uh, air traffic control down in Sky Harbor in Phoenix. Uh, you can do aircraft transponders, public safety monitoring. So there's a lot you can do with SDRs. So suffice to say for 30 bucks, anybody can do this without a license. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the software, starting with the operating system. I'm running Ubuntu 22.04, which is a distribution of Linux. So if you're running Windows, OS 10, Android, please don't ask. I honestly don't have an answer for you. So with that out of the way, there are three other pieces of software we need. The first is a software-defined radio application because this receiver really doesn't do much. All the power is actually on the software. And the one that I really like is SDR++ because of its simplicity and user experience design. 
Now, we need to be able to have a recording application that will only record when it detects audio, and for that we'll use Audacity. To glue the two together, we need another piece of software, and we're gonna use Pulse Audio Control, and basically allows us to share the output or input of another audio device with another application. I did talk to the uh, creator of SDR++, and when he saw my first video, he said, hey, I'm gonna build that natively into SDR++. I think he's actually working on a prototype this weekend. So this video may be irrelevant in a few weeks, who knows? So the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and launch SDR++. And now we want to go ahead and launch uh, Pulse Audio or Pulse Audio Control. And then the last application we want is our sound recording application, which is Audacity. Now I'm not gonna get into how to install these three packages. Please do your own research. They have lots of great uh, resources online. The important thing here is the concepts on what we're talking about um, and the configuration that I'll show you once you have these three applications installed under Linux. So in Audacity, the first thing you want to do is go to Preferences, and there should be a menu item called Recording, and under there you'll notice that it has a sound activated recording. Uh, enable that, and then adjust the uh, slider to the point where audio is only captured, at least audio that is pleasant. For me, I found that minus 30 dB works perfectly fine. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you have a pulse set here, so we're using pulse audio, and then hit record. And as you can see, it's not recording anything right now uh, because there is no audio coming to it from the application. And if we go over to the recording tab in pulse audio control, you'll see that it has Audacity listed here as the application and that it is monitoring the built-in audio analog uh, stereo, which is the output that our um, SDR++ program is using. So all I'm gonna do is go to a uh, AM broadcast station since I have a long wire antenna, and I think there's something on 910 kilohertz here. And I'm not gonna go into all the detail, but the important pieces here are that the source is set to RTL SDR. Uh, for uh, the medium wave frequencies, uh, I have direct, direct sampling set to QBranch. Um, you might wanna turn up the gain here so that you get better reception. And then for radio, I wanna make sure that I have the mode, and since I wanna to listen to AM broadcast, I have AM here. So hopefully I should be able to hit play And we're getting some audio. So you can see here it's actually recording. If I go ahead and let's say stop that audio, and we switch back over to Audacity, you can see that it has stopped recording. So this would be the same thing if there was uh, dead air. So let me go ahead maybe and start that up again. And we'll zoom in a little bit. And let's click around maybe somewhere else in the waterfall. So this software is very complex. We could spend an entire year where I record maybe a 45 minute video every morning talking about this. Don't know if I'm gonna go into all that detail, but really what's most important here is if I go ahead now and we go back, we have our continuous audio track. Um, let me shut everything down real quick. That's typically how I go back to listen to this stuff. So we'll shut that down. We don't need pulse audio. I'll even disconnect the SDR and hopefully I can hit playback. Oh, actually I need to hit stop. All right, now let's go ahead and play. I believe also uh, during a PJ tour event, uh, they, he doesn't even provide releases for that. So really that's all I wanted to share with you is the idea that there is, or there are software tools out there and hardware that's very inexpensive like this RTL SDR V3 blog uh, receiver. And you're able to essentially monitor any frequency so long as you have the right antenna and the applications are enormous. Uh, I personally plan to use my HF antenna and I'm gonna start monitoring the Amron nets I've never participated. I'm kind of curious on what they're about. 
Uh, it's a proper uh, net that takes place on HF typically, uh, among other frequencies. And I want to be able to go on my trail run in the morning and listen to the entire net while I'm running without having um, all the gaps that may exist when there's dead air. So hopefully you guys like this little uh, series. Uh, we're going to do a few more in the series. Uh, I got some really some fun stuff planned for you guys. But with that said, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.